Nandoon ang lakas-lakas ng ulan, it's raining so hard, at flooding yung mga ibang places. Still, you are here. Praise the Lord. Palakpakan niyo ang inyong mga sarili. Yan. God will honor those who honor Him. Kaya hindi sayang yung pagpunta niyo rito. He's the cause. He's a great cause for coming here. Nandito tayo to worship Him, to receive Him, and to just... Uh, to just uh, receive whatever He has for us. So uh, just have an open heart to really expect much and attempt much for God. Amen? Amen. So uh, this uh, month, uh, our theme is, ang emphasis ng theme natin for this month is about mission. Sabihin nga natin, missions. All right. So ano ba yung mission? Mission, ang ibig sabihin po ng mission is spreading Christianity. Not only here, but even to the uttermost part of the world. We want to be able to spread Christianity. We want many, many followers of Christ. Many that would come, would come to be a follower of Christ. So that's the meaning of missions. Uh, and uh, I would like to... I would like to just introduce to you a missionary. A missionary. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, one missionary. His name is uh, William Carey. William Carey he was born in England uh, during the time. During the time, I think it's uh, 1761. He was born. And uh, he lives till 1834. And uh, ang buhay niya is, is somehow medyo mahirap ang buhay niya. Okay ba kayo to learn some more about missionary heroes? If we have some movie heroes, okay, celebrity heroes, we have also heroes in the Bible, all right? Of course, that's the apostle, that's the disciples. And uh, after that comes also the different missionaries who obey Jesus. So one of them is William Carey, and uh, he's from England, and it took him seven years to convince his organization, his church, to go to India. Imagine, seven years. And it took him another seven years when he was in India to... seven years in India to baptize the first convert that he has. Imagine that, all right? Sino rito na seven years na sa Lord, hindi pa nakakapag-share ng gospel, hindi pa nakapag ng soul? You're in, in our own nation. But this one, he's in other nations of the world, India. At mahira po talaga. Uh, maraming mga hindrances. At dumaan siya sa maraming pagsubok, like, you know, his family. Imagine his family. Uh, yung kanyang anak na, like, two years old, died of dysentery. And his wife suffered with mental illness and was not able to recover. And he was left to raise up four kids on his own. And you know, he, it comes to a point that he felt like he's alone. He said that, I've lost all. But nevertheless, God is with me. He never leave me. He's with me. So, ganun ka lakas ang pananampalataya niya. So, He's also uh, known as the father of modern missions. And before William Carey died, he had translated the Bible into some 40 Indian languages. He opened schools and nine colleges. He opened up so many printing presses and so many, uh, so many things that he has done for God. By the, time Ker uh, by the time Kerry died, he had spent 41 years in India without a poor law. Okay, narinig niyo ba yun? Without a poor law. Hindi siya umuwi sa kanila. Wow, ibang klase talaga, no? Talagang one-way ticket. Hindi na bumabalik. Misan yung mga missionary after six, you know, six weeks. Gusto na umuwi. Namiss na yung family, lahat-lahat. You know, but he, 41 years in India without a poor law. And upon his death, he was given a state burial. He was honored as national hero. 
His greatest legacy was in the worldwide missionary movement of the 19th century that he inspired missionaries. He inspired these missionaries like Adoniram Hudson, Hudson Taylor, David Livingstone, and among thousands of others were impressed by his life and example. Okay? So grabe, hindi ba? Sobra. And he was known to this quotation. This is his uh, quotation. He said, he, he's known by these words that inspired many. He said something like, great, expect great things. Ano yung kasunod? Sino nakakalam ng kasunod? Expect great things and attempt great things for God. Ulitin ko ha. Sabay-sabay nga tayo, expect great things. Attempt great things for God. So yun yung kanyang famous quotation. Ayaw niya yung maliit-liit lang na ginagawa sa Lord. He wants God to be known all over the world. He wants the name of Jesus to be known everywhere he goes, even to the darkest places in the world. Come on, palakpakan natin ang Panginoon sa kanyang buhay. Thank you, Lord, for his life. So ngayon po ang aking message is about mission. Ang title ay Mission Impossible. Alright? So, siguro yung iba sa inyo nakapanood na ng movie na Mission Impossible. Like, uh, two weeks ago, I think nanood kami ni Pastor Ritz. So, paminsan-minsan po ay nanonood kami, sinasamahan ko siya. At mostly, ang, ako'y very particular with what I watch. So, it's okay for me yung mga action movie, comedy, medyo mystery pwede rin, mga sci-fi movie. Pero bihira talaga because I, I, tr- I want to try to protect my mind. My ear, my ears, my eyes. You know, sometimes yung mga bagay na yun, if you are unguarded, it can defile you. Come on. It can defile you. Sabi nga, minsan garbage in, garbage out. So, nag-iingat din tayo, alright? Hindi to being legalistic or being like self-righteous, but just being able to keep our heart on the guard. So, dito sa movie na to, Ang goal ng, ng uh, bida rito is, like, you know, they found out that somebody is going to poison, to put poison at the one-third of the rivers of China. Kwento lang to, ah. And uh, that would mean killing half of the population in China, if that would happen. So, ano ang nagagawin ng hero? Hindi ko nagsasabihin kung sino, baka sumikat siya ng husto. <laughs> si Lord ang fasisikati natin, di ba? So, ah, uh, Siya ay, uh, he, he found out about these things, siya yung talagang hinanap nung, uh, like you know, yung mga tinatawag na high caliber na magsusolve ng problem. At siya yung nakita. At yun nga ang gagawin nila. May team siya at very limited lang yung time to be able to do it. Alright? So that's really like, you know, a mission impossible. Bakit? Kasi they will risk their lives, you know, they will jump on the airplane, they will climb on the mountains, they will cross the rivers, they will, so many things that they have to do, they will risk their lives, not only their own lives, but even their loved ones, di ba? Misan okay ka lang kung ikaw lang, pero kasama mo yung loved ones mo. But he's willing to even give up his loved ones. So, ganon ka, ganon ka, like, you know, ka passionate. Ang, ang bida dito sa mission app, impossible, or yung, or yung team. So the same thing with us. Amen? So pwede rin natin i-compare. God has given us a mandate. Jesus Christ, before He left the earth, sinabi niya yung pinakamahalagang bagay out of His heart. You know, if you are dying, halimbawa, alam mo, you'll, you'll be dead in a few days, or, you know, Siyempre, pag-iisipan mo ano yung pinakamahalaga sa'yo and how would you be able to to uh, relay it or uh, how to be able to to let your loved ones know about what's in your heart, di ba? Yung pinakamahalaga ang sasabihin mo. You're not going to to talk about petty things in life, but what is important. And this is what Jesus said. Of course, praise God. That, uh, you know, he has risen from the dead, powerful, powerful, a testimony that before he went to heaven, 
Forty days nagpakita siya sa maraming tao. Hundreds of people had shown he had saw him that he was risen from the dead, and that is amazing, outstanding. And after that, doon sa uh, bago siya umakyat sa langit in a physical form, and with uh, those disciples looking at him while he is going up. Before he go up, this is what he said. Can we just turn on Matthew 28, 18 to 20? So, okay, if you have your Bible, you can uh, uh, turn your Bible with me. Let's read this. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always till the end of time. So dito sa, sa mandate na ito ng God sa atin, yung commissioning niya sa atin, God is commissioning not only the disciples, but the, all the believers. Sabihin nga natin, all the believers. If you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, and if you had known Him, hindi pwede na, hindi ka, na exempted ka rito. God had given this to all of us, this mandate. Apat po yung action word rito, sabi, go, make disciples, baptize them, and teach them to obey. Okay, let's have a short prayer. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father God, sa uh, what you are uh, really, what you, are, you want to say to us, open our hearts, open our spirit, steer us up, oh God, for this great commission. And Father, we pray as we listen to your spirit, we pray, God, that you will cause us, cause us, oh God, to love you more, to obey you more, Cause us, O oh God, to glorify your name. God, use this word to strengthen us, motivate us, and bring and help us, O oh God, to really do what you want us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, yung isa rito, yung, yung letter A is go and preach the gospel. So, isa to yung sasab. Uh, sa action word, go. Sabihin nga natin, go. So, pag sinabi ng God na go, go, ibig sabihin nun. Alright? So, ibig sabihin nun, you know, di ba yung word na God, tatlong letter? So, two-third of his uh, name means go. Kasama na yan sa pangalan ng God. We have to go. So, pag sinabing go, it means preach the gospel. We have to reach out for people. We have to preach to them. We have to uh, get out of our comfort zone. We have, to, we have to give to them whatever we receive. Okay? So, sino rito ang nakaranas ng forgiveness of sin? Okay, taas ang kamay. Forgiveness, love of God. Naranasan mo yung kapayapaan kahit may mga problema. All right? You experience healing. You experience salvation. You experience blessings, favor, wisdom. So lahat ng yan, naranasan natin, di ba? Because of the love of Jesus for us. He died for us. He showed us His love. Naranasan natin yung pag-ibig niya. And because of that, because of our love for Him, sabi sa 2 Corinthians 5.14, for the love of God constraineth us. For those who, who uh, for he who dies, so that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for him. So, yung gagawin natin, kaya natin to gagawin, preaching the gospel of Christ, is so that we would be able to, uh, out of, kaya natin ginagawa ito, is out of gratefulness, out of our love for God. Dapat ang reason natin, because we love God. Okay? Kaya natin gagawin to. Sabi ni Pablo, woe is unto me if I'm not preach the gospel. Woe is unto me. Ako ang mawawalan pag hindi ko ibinahagi ang salita ng Diyos. Ako ang mawawalan. You know, na, naalala ko dun sa Second Kings na kung saan yung apat na lepers, 
ay mamamatay sila dahil tag, tagutom dun sa kanilang bayan. At nag-usap-usap sila, imagine ninyo, apat na lepers, no? parang walang pag-asa sa buhay. Ready na talagang mamatay kung ano man yung mangyari. Nag-usap-usap sila, pag bumalik tayo dun sa city natin, tagutom dun, wala tayong makakain, mamamatay tayo. But if we will go to the camp of the Philistines, they might, they might uh, allow us to live. And we will eat and live. But we need to take a risk, sabi nila. Nag-usap sila. And then they went to that camp of the Philistines. At pagdating nga nila roon, uh, ang dami-daming mga, uh, mga, like you know, yung mga wealth o yung mga, mga gamit, mga treasures na naiwanan dahil nagmamadaling umalis yung mga Philistines because uh, that night, ginulo ng Lord yung camp nila. Akala nila may darating na maraming mga uh, sundalo na hinire yung Israelites to come and uh, kill them. So akala nila yun ang nangyari. So nagmamadali silang umalis. They ran away and they left all those things. At naranasan ng mga lepers na ito na kumain hanggang gusto nila. Siguro sinuot nila lahat ng mga jewelry, nilagyan nila yung bulsa nila ng kaya nilang dalhin. And then suddenly they realize, wait, what we're doing is not right. This is not right. We're keeping it to ourselves. Hindi dapat ganito. Kailangan ibahagi natin to sa iba. Kailangan natin tong sabihin sa iba. Sabi niya, kailangan sabihin natin to sa authority. And so they went at sinabi nga nila dun sa authority, dun sa hari. At hindi makapaniwala yung hari. At nagpadala ng mag-imbestiga. At there you go, nandun nga. Uh, nandun nga yung mga naiwan na mga pagkain, at mga kayamanan, and they were able to really get them all. Amen? So because gustong nung apat na lepers na ito, ishare sa iba whatever they experience. Tayo rin, higit pa rin ang naranasan natin. Amen? Higit pa rin ang naranasan natin sa wealth o sa material things lang. Naranasan natin ang kabutihan ng Diyos sa ating buhay. Naranasan natin yung kanyang kaligtasan. Naranasan natin ang uh, kapatawaran. Naranasan natin yung binagong buhay. Okay? Naranasan natin kung paano ni-restore tayo ng Diyos sa ating mga relasyon, sa ating mga sitwasyon. Naranasan natin yung kanyang kabutihan, yung kanyang victory in our lives. And it's not right for us to just keep it to ourselves. Amen? Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, it's not right to keep it to yourself. Kailangan natin na ipagsabi. We're, okay? Kailangan i-share natin sa iba. That's why we need to go and preach the gospel. We need to preach Christ to people kahit sa ang situation tayo. Sabi ni David, I will declare the goodness of the Lord every day in my life. Sabi niya. So let it be our goal na Whenever God will give us opportunity, declare the goodness of the Lord in that situation. Amen? Naalala ko, I was uh, at the immigration sa Pilipinas, Philippine immigration, I was there. At ang ginawa ko pag uwi, nag-FX na lang ako para, uh, like you know, like, mas mura siya, tapos, uh, it's just malapit lang naman, so, Nag-FX ako pa uwi. Nung papunta ro nag-taxi ako. Nung pa na ako, I was able to ride in a van. FX van. At dun, walang, walang nakaupo. So I got into the sarap. At uh, sinabi ko dun sa driver, bayaran ko na lang yung katabi ko. So hindi ako masyadong siksik. At saka parang, like you know, makapag-relax ka after na maghapon. Two days ako sa immigration, pabalik-balik. So I want to just relax there and have my own place. You know? So andun ako, and sabi ng Lord sa akin, nung may mga nakasakay na sa likod, sabi niya, well, sabi niya, nakapag-rest ka na, nakapag-relax ka na. So, ano ang dapat mong gawin? So, alam niyo yon yung parang automatic na. Pagtingin kong ganun, daming tao sa likod ko, o nga, no, bakit ko kinuha itong chair na to na, na bakante? Tapos, I could easily just look up to, to them and lahat sila pwede kong masyaran sa harap. Okay, so you can do that too. So, ang ginawa ko is, 
Uh, dahil wala akong katabi, I was able to really look at them and really talk to them parang personal and share to them about testimony, uh, the goodness of the Lord, paano ako pinagaling at kung paano si Lord ay makikilala at silang lahat ay alam ko na captive audience na share ng gospel na ipag-pray. Come on, palakpakan natin ang Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We take those opportunity, all right? May purpose ang Lord for everything. And one of the purpose is for us to share the good news, to share the love of Christ. So, yan yung isa sa pinaka-mission uh, natin. The second one is, sabi ni Jesus, ng God, ni Jesus, go and make disciples. Sabihin nga natin sa katabi natin, go and make disciples. So, kailangan natin na hindi lang mag-share sa mga tao, kundi yung mga ibinibigay ng Lord sa atin, we have to really disciple them. We have to help them. We have to help them to grow in God. We have to help them to go through the process of really knowing the Creator, knowing Jesus in their lives. At hindi nila makikilala ang Panginoon kung hindi dahil sa atin. We are His mouth, His eyes, His hands, and His feet. At tayo ang messenger niya. Hindi mo alam na uh, true you lang pala ang gagamitin para ikaw, para makakilala yung iba sa Panginoon. Ikaw ang gagamitin ng Lord to disciple someone. At ang pagdi-disciples, of course, ay it takes time and commitment and it takes, you know, hindi ganun kadali. You have to share your life to them. So hindi yun madali. It costs Jesus to give His life to us for us to come to know Him. So tayo rin po, we will, it will also cost us something. Hindi madali. But it's worth it. Amen? At hindi lang yun na we need to uh, share the gospel here sa Pilipinas. We need to disciple nations. Sabihin nga natin, disciple nations. Sabi ni Jesus, go and make disciples of all nations. Kaya yung inheritance natin, hindi lang po rito sa Pinas. Okay? Doon din sa mga ibang bansa. Hindi nyo ba kayo nagtataka bakit ang dami-daming mga OFW sa Pinas? Tayo ang number one producing OFW in the whole world. Come on! So even doon sa pinakamalamig, Nebraska, ano pa ba yung mga pinakamalamig na lugar? Ah, uh, may Pinoy doon. Mayroong isang uh, foreigner nagsabi, I can't believe it. There's a Filipino way down there in, doon sa pinakamalamig na lugar. I met someone. So, that means to say, God has a purpose for the Filipinos. Amen? For us. For us. Na talagang gamitin ng Lord to disciple nation, to go to the nations of the world and be a witness to others. Yung iba pumupunta lang doon na like, you know, money, hindi po yun ang pinaka-purpose. Kung ikaw ay Christian, kung ikaw ay believer, God has a higher purpose for you why you are there. Amen? Don't limit yourself. Ang salitang, uh, okay, so we need to disciple nations. Sabi po rito, uh, Ang ibig sabihin ng tinatawag na nations is, it means in Greek word, ethne. Ang ibig sabihin ng Greek word, ethne is the Greek word meaning ethnic people groups. So, doon natin gina- nakuha yung word na ethnic o ng English word, yung ethnic, from the word ethne, means nation. Uh, naging ethnic siya. Pero sa New Testament, it is translated as nations, Gentiles, or peoples. Yun ang translation ng ethnic. Now, literally, ibig sabihin nito, it refer to a people groups. Or in other words, these are groups of people with unifying ethnic identity. Ito yung mga people groups, ibig sabihin ng nations dito, hindi lang Pilipinas, kundi inside the Pilipinas, may ethnic group, may nations. All right? Inside the Philippines, may ethnic groups. These are the tribal people. They are called ethnic. They are called uh, people groups. Ang mga people groups or nations, ito yung may sarili silang kultura, may sarili silang language, right? 
may sarili silang unifying ethnic differences na sila lang yon that is considered ethnic ethnic or uh, nations so dito sa Pilipinas marami like yung, you know yung mga grupo ng Maranao Aitas Batak mga Muslim group mga iba-ibang mga mga uh, ethnic groups sila yon sila yung grupo na ito they need to be reached out at hindi madali okay Ang totoong mission, hindi yung nagpunta ka sa nag medical mission ka dyan sa kabilang uh, syudad, which is maganda, di ba? Kabilang town. Ang true missions is you go to the tribal people. You go to the ethnic groups. You go to a nation different from your culture and language. Yun ang totoong mission. And praise God na meron tayong grupo na nagtapos ng, uh, ng ating Bible school. And they experience to do missions. Yung mga graduating students natin, we send them to go to the mission. And they went to the Mindoro. Dito lang, this year lang, nagpunta sila. At nung nagpunta sila sa Mindoro, sabi nila, amazing, amazing. Sabi ni Ma'am Raquel, niya, imagine sa dun sa pinakaliblib na lugar, dun sa bundok, umakyat kami sa bundok, and when we go up the mountain, yung aming tuhod, umaabot hanggang hanggang baba namin dahil kailangan akyatin namin ng napakalaki yung yung bundok sabi nila at they have to walk like two hours doon sa mga medyo mabagal aabotin silang apat na oras na maglakad but they were able to walk in uh, at least uh, almost two hours sabi nila at amazing may BCA Tribal Mindoro. Come on, palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. We're proud of those people na nag ng church doon, BCA Mindoro. And yun ang ibig sabihin ng tinatawag na disciple nation. I-disciple natin yung group of people na kakaiba sa atin. Yun yung uh, heart of God for us. Hindi lang dito sa ating mga kaibigan o kamag-anak. Are you there? Nandiyan ba kayo? Mahalaga ba ito? Amen? Mahalaga ito sa Panginoon. Love natin si God. Love niya ang mga taong to. So, we have to love them too. Kung sino yung mahal ng Diyos, minamahal din natin. Wala tayong pinipili. And of course, we need to make an extra effort to reach them dahil malalayo sila. We have to tayo mismo ang pumunta sa kanila. So, meron pong tinatawag na unreached people group in this planet. Meron pong 9,385 nations or people groups. At uh, we would say na wala pang, one, oh, wala pang 2% ang, ang mga Christian sa mga lugar na yon. So, so, sabi rito na talagang like, you know, of course, katulad ng Thailand, Cambodia, Malaysia, Yung mga lugar na yan, ang Christianity dyan ay nasa less than 2%. At pag sinabing Christian sila, kasama na dyan yung INC, Mormons, at mga ibang evangelical groups. Alright? So, ibig sabihin talagang uh, 70% of the people in the world had never really, uh, had never really accept, accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. Some of them have heard it, but there are still 2 billion people needs to hear Jesus. Isang, isang uh, ibig sabihin, never heard of, unevangelized sila. Hindi pa narinig nila yung pangalang Jesus in their nations. Ako usually, if I go to the Asian country, and sumasakay kami ng taxi o may nakakausap ako na, you know, Hindus or Thai, Thai I would ask them, do you know the name Jesus? Do you know the name Jesus? And they would say, what's that? Hindi nila alam yun. Other people would think, would say, would ask, ano yun, sabon? Ano yun, soft drinks? Di ba? Parang shame on us, people. Because mas kilala yung mga Coca-Cola at iba-ibang brand than the name of Jesus. We have to do something about it. Amen? We have to do something about it. We have to... Let people know that there is God, that there is a God who saved, a God who died for them, and a God who loves them so much. At kung titingnan po natin ay 
tayo, ang Pilipinas, think about this, ay nasa halos gitna ng Asian nations na ito na puro mga uh, unbelievers or we would say they have different religion. At tayo lang ang only Christian countries. Alright? Tayo lang ang only Asian countries. So ano kaya ang purpose ng Lord dyan? Okay? So we have a part to do. Ang Pilipinas merong pagtawag sa Panginoon. Merong mandate ang Panginoon para sa atin to go and disciples nation. Sabihin nga natin, go and disciples nations. Alright, so ang susunod ay yung tinatawag na go and baptize. Okay, uh, four action words dito sa Matthew 28. Go, uh, disciples, baptize, and teach. So sabi rito, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen? God commanded us to do that. Bakit kaya kailangang mabautismuhan ang tao? Bakit kailangang mabautismuhan? Yung pong ginagawa na, that na like you know, yung mga bata, ini, i, i, we dedicate them, like you know, two years old, three years old, five years old. Ang tawag dun ay dedication. Meron tayo rito sa church na ginagawa yan twice or three times a year. We dedicate the kids. Kasama yung ninong ninang acknowledging that they are, that God gave them to the parents and giving back to them, acknowledging it's God who give, who give them to the parents. Ngayon, yung mga binabautismohan natin ay those that are in the, what do you call that age? May term sila. Uh, age of season or age of reason, reason, they know already what is wrong and what is right. Tama? Yan po yung mga age na 9 year old, 11, na medyo alam na nila ano yung masama, mabuti. At naintindihan na nila yung message of salvation at napakadali nila talagang dalhin sa Panginoon. It's easy for them to believe Jesus. Kaya maganda, bata pa lang makilala na nila ang Lord. And then, yung mga age na 9 year old and above, Jesus had been baptized when he was 30 years old. Amen? Before he started his ministry, he was baptized by John the Baptist. So when Jesus comes and uh, would be baptized by John the Baptist, medyo na, na humble si John. Parang na feel, ano siya, you know, yung feeling na gano'n. Sabi niya, you should be the one to baptize me, not you. I'm not even worthy to untie the tongue of your sandals. I'm not even worthy to touch you. And there, here you are, I'm going to baptize you. But Jesus is so humble enough, Amen. He said that we need to fulfill all kinds of righteousness. At kasama ito. Kasama ito. So if Jesus had been baptized by water, how much more are we? Amen? So we need to be baptized by water. Sun Saturday, we'll have baptism. That is 1 o'clock dito sa third floor natin. Merong a short class about water baptism. So sino po rito hindi pa na bautismo? Taas ang kamay. Water baptism, hindi pa nabautismuhan, taas ang kamay. Come on, taas ang kamay. May kausap ba ako? Alright. Nahihiya ba yung iba, magtaas ang kamay? O ayaw ipaalam? Alright. Buti pa yung bata, nagtaas ang kamay. Thank you. So we need to be baptized by water because it solidify our, our identity in Christ. It solidify our faith. Na nagsasabi, yes. Yes, I'm going to follow Jesus. I want to become more like Jesus. I'm uh, ready to follow you, God. I'm ready to turn away from the world and follow you, Jesus. I want to be baptized by water. Alam nyo, nung nabautismohan ako ng tubig, talagang it solidify my faith. Mula noon, parang something happened to me. You know? Like, naging serious ako sa Christian life ko. Hindi that, katulad ng dati. So something happened. So we need to be baptized by water. We need that. At yun yung utos ng Panginoon. To those who have not been baptized, encourage them. Come on, let us be baptized by water. We need that. We need to fulfill all kinds of righteousness. At yung pinakahuling action word is, sabi, go teach them to obey. Sabihin nga natin, go teach them to obey. So we need to teach people to obey. Amen? 
part ito ng discipleship. Baptism and teaching them to obey, part of discipleship. Sabi ni Jesus, if you love me, you will obey my commandment. Again, sabi ni Jesus, if you love me, you will obey my commandment. So we need to teach them the commandment of God. Ano yung word of God? Ano yung mga inuutos ng Panginoon? And we have to teach them kung ano ang right and wrong. We have to teach the disciple what is, uh, how to make the right decisions. Ano ba yung reward and punishment? Pag may ginawa ka, lagi yung may punishment, kaya may reward dyan. So we have to teach them. Teach, teach yung mga dinidisciple natin. They have to make the right decisions. Kung hindi, may consequence. At kung uh, sumunod naman, mayroong reward. Amen? We need that. Training, we need training. Yung kids need to tuturuan natin, di ba? We're teaching them to become a disciple, to be obedient. Uh, yung mga bata, lalo na toddlers or more than that, hindi natin sila tinatanong na, gusto bang kumain? Hindi mo sila tinatanong like, gusto bang pumunta sa school? We just give them food. And we ask them, come on, eat that food. I don't want to eat, di ba? Sabihin nila. I'm not asking you if you don't want to eat. I'm asking you to eat that food because you need it. So ganon ang training. That should be the training. There are things that we allow them to make decisions with, like yung mga minor things. But the big things like going to school, it's, we are the one who make that decision. Hindi natin tinatanong, oh, ano ka ba? Like, you know, are you in the mood to go to school? Are you in the mood to study? No! We bring them to school. You have to go to school because you need it. So the same with our spiritual life, our discipleship life. Kung hindi tayo matuturo ang sumunod, we will not grow in God. Amen? At dito po, meron tayong mga classes din, mga discipleship classes. We encourage you to go. You go from next level to the next level. Kailangan nating mag-grow in God. Kailangan nating ma-train to obey. Sabihin nga po natin, train to obey. So ito yung mga inuutos sa atin ng Lord. And it seems parang imposible, di ba? Parang overwhelming, parang mission impossible. Sabi rito, this mandate, the Great Commission, is kind of a scary proposition. Simply, it has been fought for and died for by millions of disciples over the last 2,000 years and it and is farther, very far from completion. So parang imposible dahil uh, maraming, ang, ano, maraming ang nagbigay na ng buhay para sa bagay na ito. At kanina yung sinabi ko yung buhay ni William Carey na kung saan binigay niya yung buhay niya. Di ba parang imposible yun? Hindi ko ata kayang gawin yun. Parang talagang hindi ko kayang gawin yun. But why were they able to do it? Why were they able to do it? So sa susunod po, I would like to share to you bakit nila nagawa yun. So let's look on that. And we want to receive whatever they receive from God for them to be able to do that. So sabi ni Jesus, Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen? I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Talagang mananalo at mananalo ang mga anak ng Diyos. Men, mananalo at mananalo ang simbahan ng Diyos. So the Great Commission is God's commission in our lives. So it's God's plan for reaching humanity. And the Great Commission is more than message to be preached. Uh, I'm just not preaching to you. I'm really praying that you will do something about it. Mari sabi nyo, um, I, I really like yung tinuro mo, Pastor Raning. But ang tanong ko, what will you do about it? Anong gagawin natin dyan? So, uh, Great Commission is an order to make disciples who will also make a disciples. Amen? Hindi tayo natapos sa first generation lang na tinuruan na ma-disciple yung isa. Yung tinuturuan nating maging disciple, kailangan maging rin siyang mag siyang discipler para from generation to generation ma-spread ma, ma, ma ang Christianity, ma-spread si Jesus from generation to generation. So, it is an order to make disciples who will make disciples. It's not only preaching or teaching to them, hindi yon, but giving them an example to follow and mobilize, mobilizing them 
to their kingdom destiny. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. So, I want you to know that katulad ni William Carey na parang imposible and yet God is able to make it happen in our days and even in our lives if we are willing. Amen? Tayo pong lahat ay tumayo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, God. Thank you, God. Just want to us to, to pray for a while. Let's have a short prayer. Tanungin po natin ang ating mga sarili while we are, you know, not looking at our neighbors. Just uh, close your eyes. Allow God to speak to you right now. Are you willing to commit yourself to God? Are you willing to, to go preach the gospel? Are you willing to make disciples? Are you willing to be baptized or even baptize others? Are you willing to uh, teach others what you receive as it has been taught to you? Are you willing to be trained to be discipled? And at the same time, are you willing to disciple others and just be a good example and be able to do your kingdom destiny? So yung po yung mga tanong. So I just want us to just pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, O Lord Jesus. At habang tayo po ay nakapikit, walang tumitingin sa ating katabi, I just want to challenge you. Anyone here na maaring hindi pa tinanggap si Jesus bilang Diyos, at tagapagligtas, dito po yun nag-uumpisa sa pagtanggap at pananampalataya na, na siya ay tagapagligtas, siya ay namatay, siya lamang ang pwedeng magligtas sa atin. At ginawa niya na ang lahat and it's up to us to make a decision na talagang, Lord, I want to receive you. I believe in what you've done. I believe, oh God, I need you. I need you. I need you in my life. I want you to just raise your hands. Taas nyo lang po yung kamay ninyo. Just want to pray for you. Sige po, salamat sa nakataas ang kamay. Salamat. Please go ahead, mga cell leaders. Just go around. Sige po, itaas po natin ang ating mga kamay. Thank you, Lord. Somebody would just pray for you, touch you on your shoulder. God, thank you, O oh God. Sabihin po natin tong prayer na to, believing in our hearts, really believing in faith, na when we pray this prayer, the Holy Spirit will come upon us. The Holy Spirit will be so real in our lives. The love of God will be so real in our hearts and mind. Sige po, sabihin po natin tong prayer na to. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, marami pang mga hindi pinagpipray, so please just go ahead, cell leaders. Thank you, go ahead, find someone to pray for. Sabihin po natin itong panalangin na ito. Panginoong Jesus, binibigay ko sa inyo ang aking sarili. Inaamin ko po na ako ay makasalanan at humingi ng tawad sa lahat ng aking mga kasalanan. Linisin mo po ako ng iyong banal na dugo. At sa oras na ito, tinatanggap ko ang kapatawaran, ang iyong paglilinis. Iniimbitahan kita, Jesus, sa pamagitan ng iyong Espiritu Santo na pumasok sa aking puso. Ikaw ang maging Diyos at tagapagligtas ng aking buhay. Ikaw ang masunod sa aking buhay. Salamat po, O Diyos. Kayo po ang magabay kayo po ang masunod sa aking buhay at salamat sa iyong biyaya at kalakasan. Salamat po sa bagong buhay. Salamat po sa iyong paggabay. Sa pangalan ni Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, just assure them, O God. Assure them, Lord, of eternal life. Assure them, O God, Assure them of your love. Assure them, God, that they are children of God. Assure them, O God, that you have planned 
and purposes for their lives. God, I commit them unto you, even as they commit themselves unto you. In Jesus' name. And lahat tayo magpray po, yung iba na, just, let's just pray about the commitment we want to give to God. God, we commit to you our lives. God, let it be God na hindi lang mensahe na narinig namin ngayon, kundi how will we apply this in our lives. At kung meron kang mga ini-impress na mga tao na we, want, we need to share the gospel, we need to reach them out. I pray, give us your boldness. Give us, oh God, your strategy. And Lord, help us just to obey God, as simple as that. Just to obey, just to go there. Build relationship. Show them that we love them, God, that we appreciate them. God, build a bridge to be able, God, na makapag-connect sila. And I, we pray that these persons will see and hear the good news of salvation. And they would say, Totoo nga, Panginoon. Salamat po na ako ay biniyayaan mo. Salamat po na may nag-reach out sa akin. Salamat po sa bagong buhay. We thank you, God. We just say we love you and we want to obey you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.